Heart disease in cats, is it painful and what's the prognosis? That's the question I'm asking today. So my next question is from Miri, um, who has a cat that's been diagnosed with heart failure that was only diagnosed when the disease was quite advanced. And she is wondering if the disease really is irreversible like she's been told. She's wondering if it's a painful condition, what medication there is to treat it, and ultimately what the ultimate prognosis is for a cat with heart failure. So to start with, I'd just say that, you know, cats really are good at hiding their disease. And so often, especially with heart failure, we're only picking it up really quite late in the day when the changes are already quite advanced and the disease is already quite well progressed. So, you know, don't feel guilty about that. Our cats really are very good at hiding when they're not feeling very well. So it's something that we often don't notice until they're late and, and you know, until things are quite severe. Now, if we're thinking of heart failure in general, you know, in most cases, the changes are irreversible, I'm afraid, especially when we're picking it up late. There might be some conditions where it's at least partially reversible, um, you know, and that's if there's an underlying cause. So a couple of examples would be um, one being a taurine deficiency. Now, that's not something that happens very often these days because taurine is specifically added to diets to make sure that this doesn't happen. Um, but the other common uh, cause of uh, heart failure, so a cardiomyopathy in cats, um, is hypothyroidism. So this is a disease in older cats where the thyroid um, is overactive. It's producing too much, uh, too much thyroid hormone. That causes high blood pressure and it causes heart problems. So if we're picking that up, especially if we're picking that up early um, and we're treating that hypothyroidism, then potentially we're going to reverse any changes that have gone on within the heart. You know, if we're picking that up late, the changes are going to be permanent. But yeah, that, that's definitely going to help. Um, so the next question is, is it painful? Well, you know, no, I don't consider it painful as such, but it does have a negative effect on a cat's kind of quality of life. It's going to cause them to be feeling tired, um, to be uh, weak, to be short of breath. Um, and then there are a couple of other things that we can think about which may be kind of more distressing and, may, and, and certainly one of them is very painful and that one is the risk of a blood clot breaking off from within the heart and becoming lodged somewhere in the body. Um, that's called um, an aortic thromboembolism and the most common place this goes to in cats is actually the blood vessels as they branch off the main aorta, so the main um, artery coming out of the heart and they go down to the, the back legs of a cat. So you'll have a cat who very suddenly goes off their back legs, they can't move their back legs, they can't feel their back legs, they also become very cold, and that is incredibly painful. Um, so they'll be crying, they'll be very distressed. Um, you know, something people will think is that they might have been hit by a car, but what's happened is a blood clot is blocking the blood flow to the back legs, and they're then effectively kind of dying. Um, the back legs, the muscle and the tissues dying, it's incredibly painful. Um, you know, it's not massively common, but it's a real risk in cats with heart failure. And then the other thing that is, you know, kind of really distressing for a cat is kind of at the end when their lungs and their chest are filling up with fluid and they're effectively suffocating. So that can be very distressing, understandably, for a cat. So, you know, that's kind of the impact of quality of life. You know, it's not painful as such, but does have a negative impact. Moving on to treatment now, this is something that I kind of really struggle with, with treating cats with heart failure, as there's not much really good quality evidence that very much of what we do makes a really significant difference in the disease process. You know, it likely does help, but we're not getting really good um, increases in life expectancy that we would with, for example, dogs being treated with heart failure. But there are a couple of things that we can give and that we do give and that I think do make a difference. Sometimes it's not as dramatic a difference as we would like, that's all. Now the first one of those is something called frusamide or ferrosamide. That's a diuretic that causes the kidneys to produce more urine and effectively kind of reduces the amount of fluid within, within the body and that's something that, that happens in heart failure, so fluid starts to build up within the body. Another drug is something called pimabendan um, and that may or may not help um, because it should improve how well the heart contracts, come how efficiently it's pumping pumping um, blood around the body. I mean, it also reduces the, the amount of oxygen the heart needs to use to, to fulfill its role as well. Um, the next kind of class of drug is something called an ACE inhibitor, and benazapril is an example of that, that helps um, to reduce salt retention and so kind of reduce fluid buildup as well, a little bit like the furosemide, um, as well as reduce blood pressure. And again, this may or may not help or may or may not have an implication with how well a cat can survive with an underlying heart failure. Um, and then the thing, uh, another drug that we definitely um, have good evidence for 
is something called clopidogrel, um, and that definitely helps to reduce the risk of these aortic thromboembolism um, events in cats, so that blood clot formation. So what happens with, uh, uh, with a cat with heart failure, we get turbulent um, blood flow within the heart, so it's kind of swirling around, and you'll actually, within the kind of the mid middle of that swirling blood, the blood can actually be very stationary, so it's not moving very much, and that's when we get the platelets, which are responsible for blood clot formation, um, kind of coming together and forming little clots, which then form bigger clots, and then bits of that bigger clot break off. So um, clopidogrel really reduces the platelets sticking together and forming those clots in the first place, and we know that in cats that have had a, a clot formation, then giving them clopidogrel really reduces their risk of developing further clots. So that's something that we might give to any cat with heart failure, but definitely if we're performing an ultrasound of these cats to examine their hearts more closely, then those that have something called smoke, which is um, kind of these little clots already forming um, within the heart are definitely candidates for having clopidogrel added to their treatment regime. And then finally, if we've got an irregular heartbeat, um, you know, so the heart's not beating in a nice regular fashion, then we might be able to give specific antiarrhythmic treatment to try and get the heart beating in a more regular, a regular rhythm. Um, you know, and then finally, what's the prognosis and life expectancy? Well, that's very varied in cats with heart failure. So some cats, um, you know, they'll only be presented very late in the day when their chest is already really full of fluid, they're already really struggling to breathe, and some of those will die straight away, kind of despite the best efforts to save them. Um, you know, they're just too far gone. Um, in some cases, the disease, you know, progresses very, very quickly, so they might not be in such dire straits when they first present, but, but, dis but despite being started on a number of different drugs, um, you know, the heart failure progresses very, very quickly. Others, though, it's much more slowly, and the treatment maybe has a better effect or the, the actual form of heart failure they've got isn't quite so aggressive and it's much more kind of slowly progressing. So, you know, we think of life expectancy of maybe about six to 18 months, certainly for those cats that aren't dying in the kind of very short period after diagnosis, then that might be something that we can think about. Um, that the life expectancy is around six to 18 months. You know, it's difficult though to be any more specific than that, unfortunately. You've been watching the Dr. Alex Answers video podcast. Remember to subscribe and head over to DrAlexAnswers.com for any links, downloads, and get your question answered.